it's at the edge of the Judean desert. It's a strenuous hike to reach its top. And 2,000 years ago, Herod created a lavish palace complex on its summit. Later, Romans defeated here Jewish rebels. And no, I'm not in Masada, nor in Machaerus. Welcome to Herodium. Herodium is named after King Herod, and having sites named after the monarch is not such a big exception. After all, the Maccabean kings created desert fortresses like Hyrcania and Alexandrion, which are named after them. So why not to name a site after yourself if you are King Herod? And unlike the Maccabees, he didn't just take a hilltop and designed it. He really created the hill itself. Originally, there were two hills, and one was sacrificed. It was cut down so the hill of Herodium would be built up and would look so magnificent. Josephus says that Herodium was shaped like a breast of a woman. To me, frankly, it looks more like a top of a volcano, but everyone in his own inner world. Perhaps the best preserved part of Herod's palace in Herodium is this bathhouse. The ceiling here is all original and fully intact. This is the cold temperature room, the frigidarium, and so is the tepidarium. The dome above it is not restored. This is how it was found. And that is perhaps the reason that centuries later, such an exceptionally preserved section of Herod's palace would be used again, but by Christian monks. And the place that once saw so much fortification and nudity apparently became a Christian chapel. The most recent research done in Herodium uncovered also the original stairway leading up to the summit of the mountain. 200 marble steps, according to the writings of Josephus, which we now understand ended in a set of arches and a grand hallway decorated with colorful frescoes painted in white, red, the green, and black. Such an amazing entryway from the time of Herod. Frankly, we found already similar finds from the palaces of Herod in Masada and other locations. But what makes Herodium so special is that Josephus tells us that Herodium was also Herod's burial place. He died in Jericho and was brought to Herodium for final rest, but Josephus doesn't say the exact location and tracking Herod's tomb would be the life journey of Professor Eud Netzer from the Hebrew University. Since the 1970s, he's been looking for that lost legendary tomb. And where do you start? Netzer was of the opinion that Herod's tomb cannot be on the upper city because it then would defile the whole mountain as the Jews were obsessed with purity and nothing worse than the impurity of the dead. The tomb has to be in the lower city. And over 40 years of research, he devoted to expose the lower city, finding here a beautiful swimming pool with a round tower erected in its center, a bathhouse on one hand, a beautiful building on the other. So many magnificent finds, but where is the tomb? A dramatic change would happen in 2007 when Netzer decides to make one more attempt to find that tomb, but in a different location, on the edge of the upper city facing northeast. Here, in a surprising location, he finds the foundation of a big square structure built of ashlar stones and highly decorated. And in it, he finds the remains of three coffin, sarcophagi, one of them a beautiful reddish pinkish stone he identifies as the very bone box, the coffin of King Herod. The Israel Museum made a special exhibition of it, but unfortunately Netzer himself did not see that special exhibition. While preparing for it, Netzer fell not too far away from that tomb by mistake and passed away two days later in the hospital. Blessed his men. The discovery of this tomb has changed things radically here. Now there were budgets that Netzer could use to keep exploring the side of the mountain, 
and more surprises were coming up. Here, to the right side of the tomb, he found a theater, a small theater facing Jerusalem, whose screening back room was so lavishly decorated. The lower part has this design which seems to be imitating the second Pompeian style. That we've seen already in Masada in Jerusalem, but above, for the first time ever in Herod's palaces, a painting, an illusion of an open window, and beyond it, a view of the Nile. This is amazing. This is a whole new level of the extravagance and opulence in the time of Herod. But Herodium is not only a story of a royal tomb and the search after it. The archaeological evidence shows that in Herodium also fierce battles took place later, after the time of Herod, between Jewish rebels and the Romans. Both in the Big Jewish Revolt and later in the Bar Kokhba Revolt, Jews cling to this site and the Romans came to defeat them. Arrowheads, secret the tactical tunnels, big round stones to be rolled against the enemy are all evidence of possibly a great drama that took place here. And while the Jews were waiting for the Romans, here it seems that they converted a reception hall from Herod's time into a public seating arena. These benches were all formed so the Jews could sit together and listen to the Torah read in the center. The word synagogue comes from this very specific architectural design. Synagogi, to sit together, is what happened here 2,000 years ago, and that institution of the synagogue, the synagogue, exists to this day.